Hello everyone and welcome to the finals of the chess.com global chess championship finals. Uh, it is the second day and it is Nihal Sarin with the white pieces against Wesley So with black. This is the second game uh, of the uh, of the second part of the match. Basically this is game six and if you remember uh, in the first four games Wesley won both of his games with the white pieces. Both of his games with the draw pieces ended with a draw uh, with the black pieces ended with a draw and uh, now Nihal uh, needs to beat Wesley in the second part of the match which means Wesley only needs one and a half points uh, out of the four games to actually uh, win the entire thing and win two hundred thousand dollars which is uh, absolutely incredible and uh, uh, starting off the day two Nihal uh, got a draw uh, where Wesley had the white pieces so at least he stopped the bleed and this is now game six where uh, a lot of cool things happen so let's check it out and see how this impacts the the entire picture uh, so Nihal uh, with the white pieces opens with d4 and it's very interesting we're going to have the same opening that Nihal used with white to uh, absolutely annihilate Nishgiri uh, in the semifinals so let's see how Wesley deals with that knight to f6 c4 e6 and now again this bishop to f4 like the ninth most popular uh, idea in, in this position uh, we have d5 by Wesley c captures knight captures attacking the bishop and bishop to g3 we have pawn to c5 and pawn to e4 so everything the same as in the game against Anish Giri knight to f6 we have knight to d2 giving up the the d4 pawn and now if you remember uh, in the game against um, uh, Anish Anish played c captures on d4 also we mentioned that knight to c6 there is a game uh, from the uh, US championship where Ray Robson defeated Hans Niemann with knight to c6 but Wesley just goes for queen captures on d4 and it's sort of a okay the engine says c captures on d4 and queen captures on d4 are oh, pretty much of the same value maybe uh, the engine prefers queen captures on d4 uh, a, a bit more so obviously Wesley knew about this as Nihal won a very nice game against uh, Anish so he prepared for it and it is now as of move 7 that we have a completely new game so okay knight g to f3 uh Nihal very happily develops the knight with tempo the queen is attacked queen back to d8 and now pawn to e5 so similar in the game against Anish uh, Nihal wins the d6 and f6 squares knight to d5 and now a3 not allowing b4 uh, to be used for the knight if the knight ever comes to b4 then you have to be careful knight to d3 could be an option so best to just uh, de deny a black this option bishop to e7 we have bishop to d3 uh, the bishop here is being x-rayed by the queen but there's just no good discovery to be, be made with the knight so bishop to d7 continuing development Queen e2 and now pawn to a6. We have castles by both sides, castles, castles, and now rook a to d1. And uh, even though there are four pieces in front of this rook, uh, uh, it, it's, it still could mean uh, a lot uh, if uh, some of the pieces move, like bishop captures on h7, your queen could uh, be in trouble. So just bishop to b5, eliminating this very strong piece, uh, or not. If uh, if Nihal captures it, he can win back his pawn, like captures, captures, and captures with the queen. Now queen to b6, and okay, it's nothing much. Black is perfectly fine here, nothing really uh, happening here. So Nihal uh, says, I'm not interested uh, in, in winning back the pawn. He plays knight to c4, which is the general idea. You want to have access to the d6 square, everything, uh, pretty much uh, all of your pieces are uh, trying to make that happen. And now knight to c6. Uh, and uh, now comes pawn to h4. If you go for knight to d6 right away, it's not all that impressive. For example, yes, you are threatening the b7 pawn, but bishop captures attacks the queen, queen captures on d3, or even rook captures on d3 and now b5 and black is perfectly fine here there is no way to take advantage of this um, d file so Nihal starts the attack with h4 uh, we have knight to a5 now by Wesley you could also capture and just push b5 but Wesley doesn't like this uh, for example captures captures b5 you still allow white to keep his light square bishop but the bishop is coming to b1 queen to e4 h5 is coming could be a lot to, to deal with so Wesley says okay knight to a5 and now queen to e4 defending the knight here but also uh, just threatening checkmate on h7 so g6 you have to play this and now knight to e3 
Now might be even a, a good idea to put the knight on d6, uh, but uh, Nihal abandons the plan. He just continues with knight to e3. Knight captures an e3, queen captures an e3, now threatening some very nasty discoveries, so just queen to c7. It's finally time to get the queen off the d-file. Knight to d2, the knight now can come to e4 and then have access to f6, which also could be great if the knight comes to f6, queen comes to h6, uh, you might be able to checkmate black. So bishop captures on d3, Queen captures and now rook f to d8. Everything with tempo not allowing white to uh, mobilize the, the attacking pieces. Queen to e3 and now knight back to c6. Uh, putting pressure on the e5 pawn, uh, knight to d4 will always be an option. So knight to e4, preparing to jump to f6. And now even though uh, you, you sort of can capture on e5, it's not really a move. If you play knight captures on e5, then uh, you, you will... Uh, be under this pressure for, for a very long time, the bishop staring at the queen on c7, not something you want to allow, especially when you only, like Wesley said in an interview after the first uh, match, uh, he said, okay, it's basically the same match, but it's two days, he said that his plan is to make uh, a few draws and <laughs> win the match. So here, knight to d4 by Wesley, and now knight to f6 with check. We have king to g7, of course, you are not interested in capturing this, so king to g7, stopping uh, the queen from coming to h6, and now bishop to f4. Again, preparing bishop to h6, but it's very easily to prevent this. Just knight to f5 by Wesley. Attacking the queen, stopping the uh, bishop h6 maneuver. So queen to h3, and now king to h8. This king to h8 is a very nice... Uh, uh, tactical idea by Wesley. As long as the king is on g7, you cannot play bishop captures on f6 because then e captures on f6 comes with check and then you lose the queen on c7. By moving the king to h8, there is no such uh, idea and now bishop captures on f6 is what uh, he's planning. So uh, Nihal cannot allow this. He needs to keep as many attackers as possible. Knight back to e4 and now Wesley starts trading. Rook captures on d1, rook captures on d1 and rook to d8. Uh, now knight to, knight to d6, stopping any further trades, and now uh, king back to g8. You have to stop knight captures on f7, so king to g8. We have h5 by Nihal, and now how do you defend? Uh, there is only one way, pawn to g5. Now chases away the bishop, and the problem here is that if you move the bishop, then it's perfectly fine to start capturing on d6. Knight captures on d6, will be played e captures, bishop captures, you're going to win this pawn. Bishop captures, rook captures, let's say everything gets straight it off you even play h6 you might have some ideas of queen c3 queen g7 checkmate it's just very easy for wesley to stop this queen d1 checking h2 queen uh, will go to d2 guard the c3 square now you're attacking b2 you're attacking f2 uh, it's just completely winning for black so instead, uh, after this g5 move, Nihal tries the only move that uh, sort of keeps him in the game, and that is pawn to h5. Now saying, okay, if the g file opens up, I might have some uh, very unpleasant pressure uh, against the black king. Uh, but it is now up to you to decide how Wesley can get uh, through this. There is only one move that wins the game for Wesley. So feel free to pause the video and try to figure it out uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on realizing that yes, the bishop can indeed be captured. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is G captures on F4. That's the good stuff. And now it seems like you should be in some trouble. The knight covers Z8, the pawn covers G7. There's just not enough time. Queen to G4 check. King to f8, now luckily the knight on f5 is guarding the g7 square, so the only way to continue the attack is to capture on f5, but then you allow a very important Svishnsug for Wesley, and that of course is rook captures on d1, which will come with check. So knight captures on f5, now if you can get queen to g7, uh, you will win the game, but rook captures on d1 with check. This forces the queen away from the g-file, queen captures on d1, and now e captures on f5, and now Wesley is up a full bit. Bishop, uh, but his king is kind of uh, in, a, in a delicate place, so can Nihal take advantage of this? He plays queen d3, goes after the f5 pawn. Yes, Wesley will pick up this pawn, but then Nihal can further activate his queen. So queen captures on e5, queen to d7, now threatening queen to c8 check, which will force Wesley to give up the bishop. So queen to d6, stopping this, and queen to c8 with check. We have bishop to d8, blocking check, and now queen captures on f5. Wesley eliminates the h6 pawn, and now queen 
king captures on c5 uh, with check king to g7 and now queen to d5 attacking the bishop on d8 we have queen to b6 defending uh, and now pawn to b4 uh, so now Wesley is just pretty much up a full piece. We have h6 uh, by, by Wesley and now queen to e5 check. We have queen to f6 blocking check, queen to d5 and now just b6. And he was in this position on move 43 that Niha Sarin resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So by winning a game 6, Wesley uh, basically wins the match because he only needed uh, a point and a half out of the four games. And as the fifth game ended in a draw, he wins the sixth game. That's a point and a half which means Wesley wins the entire thing. Wesley wins the Global Chess Championship Finals, wins the $200,000, and uh, quite an amazing performance. He defeated Andrejkin in the quarterfinals, Hikaru in the semifinals, and uh, now Nihal Sarin uh, in the finals. Uh, truly uh, an amazing performance by Wesley. So here you don't really have a way of continuing this game. You could play a few more moves, let's say Ponte A4, uh, but once Queen G5 comes, uh, defends the bishop, attacks the queen, you will have to decline the trade, and then let's say Ponte b5 uh, and now well let's say captures captures and that's pretty much it there's no more uh, no more moves for white everything is defended which means you're just up a full piece and uh, continuing this would just be well borderline disrespectful and of course Nihal not interested in that uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game, and this uh, ends the, the Chess.com Global Chess Championship Finals uh, breakdown. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, very nice run by Wesley. So very nice run by Nihal as well. He he had some brilliant games, really uh, really played uh, an astonishing match against Anish Giri in the semifinals. Uh, took it all the way to Armageddon to win that one, uh, but uh, Wesley was uh, just just a bit too much in the finals. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, once again, big congratulations to everyone who uh, figured out the depost the video moment because yes, it, it, it is uh, capturing a piece that was offered, but sometimes that's the hardest thing to do in chess. And uh, well, uh, uh, you know, congratulations to everyone who found it. And uh, a special announcement, I will, uh, next video I upload will be actually a game a subscriber sent me. Uh, he, he, he sent me an email saying that uh, he sacrificed his queen three times. And I was like, okay, it's probably some sort of a weird game where the, the, the queen sacrifice wasn't even valid or something because those are mostly the, the emails I get. Uh, but this game uh, was nothing like that. This game was truly a beauty and you guys will enjoy it. So stay tuned for that. Um, so yeah, uh, that's the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And the little announcement, uh, I would like to thank uh, Seshadri Subramanian, Erin is the best fiance, uh, Marcus Grebel, uh, Wesley the Greatest, and James Chambers for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.